getting started here on the MCI. Now, we've seen before, we've got a pretty good air leak out of this valve. This regulator is leaking. And this valve is leaking. We just got the parts in from Luke at US Coach to rebuild both valves and the diaphragm. So, I got my truck backed up over here. I'm just going to get started on getting these apart, get them on the back of the truck, and I'll get the rebuild kits out, and we'll go through them. So looking at how this is on here, there's a hose on this side, there's one over here on the other side, and there's this line in on the bottom. I think the easiest thing to do is going to take all three lines off, undo the two bolts here that mount this, take this off as a unit, then we come over to this side, same thing. We're going to undo this line, this line, and this line, and we're going to take all this off as one. I'm not servicing the regulator on this side, but I'm not going to be able to get it off where it sits in chassis. So once we get these lines off here, we'll go ahead and get these two bolts out and get this drop down. This is really a pain to do one-handed. We got it out of there though. So, now that we got it out, we'll start taking it apart. I'll go grab the parts I have for the rebuild kit for this so we can see what we got to work with. I believe it's just O-rings for this and then O-rings and diaphragm for this. So these are the rebuild kits from Luke at US Coach. This is going to be the one for the diaphragm and then these are my two for the valves here. So, just take all the 3 8 off the front of this diaphragm here. I'm going to want to hold down on it too because it's got a spring in there. here this piece is retained right in here under this cap There'll probably be an o-ring there and there's the rest of the diaphragm so let's get this stuff off the diaphragm so we get the diaphragm swapped then I think that's gonna be it for the parts on here so I'll get this back half torn apart real quick and we'll see what it's got. Alright, so we got the diaphragm out of these. They were just stuck to it. So the bottom half of it's in. We get this lined up with the holes. Top half on. And we'll kind of just hold the whole thing together until we get a couple bolts in it. Now, there is a bracket that goes on this side of it. So I'm going to put these couple bolts in over here first. super tight on this, just snug it up. You don't want to push the diaphragm back out. We're just going to get all six of these bolts tightened up, and then we'll get the back side put back together. So I forgot to record it going back together. So this 7 8 plug back here, there's a little tiny spring under it. There's an O-ring in the end of it, which is this O-ring, and this plunger rides in it. 
in this direction. So the little button sticks towards you and the seal goes forward. Now, when I put this together, I'm trying to keep all the parts together so I can put them back in their bags. Um, it came with a fiber washer. Now the fiber washer would fit under this plug, but it's also got an O-ring there to seal. And there wasn't anything under there to start with. So I'm going to make a phone call real quick and see what that's supposed to be for, or see if I can pull up the manual for this bus. So I'm not sure exactly where that goes. I would assume it goes right here. It's the only place it seems to match up, but there wasn't one there to start with. So usually when I take stuff like this apart, I kind of just try to match up parts as I take them out and replace them one at a time. All right, now we're on to the air valve here. Now it's got a spiral lock. Just dropped right here. It's got a spiral lock. It holds on this back side. And then a plate and two screws on the front. Now that that's out, it just pulls out of there. So this thing is leaking bad in all these O-rings. And they're just, they're flat. The aluminum is almost sticking up proud of them. So you're going to want to look down inside the bore. It's a little bit of dirt from my glove right there. You're going to want that to be clean, but make sure that there's not any terrible gouging in it. Let's see if I can show you guys this here. So I can see some lines in it, but it looks like that's all from grease. But what we're going to do is I'll get some brake clean and a rag. We'll get this all cleaned out. We'll get this cleaned up before it goes back in. But these O-rings are just trashed on here. So I'm going to go grab some stuff. We'll get this cleaned out and make sure that there's nothing wrong with the body section of it. And then we'll go from there. So we sprayed the bore out with brake clean. We ran a rag through it. I don't see anything that's going to stop that from sealing. There's a few little scratches in it, but... Be careful when you're doing this that you're not hitting the aluminum bore or anything with your pick. You don't want to tear it up. So when you try to get your pick in there to get these O-rings out, just be careful. Because if you nick it, you can cause yourself some problems later. If a little burr is sticking up because of that, it's going to tear up the bore and then you're going to start having a leak. Yeah, that's, that's not even peeling out of there anymore. That's just, it's hard. So I went ahead and got it cleaned up the best I could. Same way, reverse going back in. I put this O-ring in first, then I put this O-ring on. I saved this last one just to show you guys. These are actually really nice because they stay in place. So that's ready to go back in. So sits this way in the bus, the valve goes through the front. You don't want to put oil on it because you want this to go in nice, you don't want to mess up the O-rings. Now you guys saw how easy too that thing just pulled straight out of there and getting it back in even with lubricant on it you really got to push so that's back in got the spiral lock just like on a uh, piston wrist pin just a normal spiral lock so that goes on there Then this goes the other way. Just like that. So there's your two stop points for it. There we go. Both of those are gone through and reassembled. So I'll go get those mounted back up in the bus and then I'll pull the other set out so I can do the valve. I'm not doing the diaphragm on the other one, just the valve's leaking. And this is that second set of valves. 
come to the back side here. Again, it just pushes out. That one actually looks better than the other one. Four is not bad either. So when I'm doing these, just take a rag. Looks good. That o ring broke. So ring's already cracked, but it's going to break. Yep, that one broke. And so did that one. This is actually in worse shape on the rubber. Nice and clean. Let's grab the other set of O rings here. Now we'll get these put back together. These picks are made specifically for O-rings, they're like a spoon, they don't really have a sharp point on them so they won't tear things up, so there's the first one. Got out of WD-40, which is actually about the best time because then I can steal this lid off and use it on something else. And you can use these lids on pretty much anything and it really doesn't matter what type of oil you're using on this either. You just want something so you're not putting it in dry because you don't want to risk cutting or tearing one of these O-rings going in. There it is. It's ready to go back on the bus. So now that we've got the valve back in here, we've got all the lines started. There's just two bolts right in here and here against the body to hold this one up in the chassis. And then this line, this line, this line, and the one on the bottom right here is this one. So, it's one extra line on this one, but it's not a big deal. There's actually better access on this one to get to it than there is on the other one. With the normal length wrench, and this isn't even a long one, it's just a normal gear wrench. When you do this one, getting the lines off, you're hitting like the up pipes and all that stuff. This one, you actually have room to get in here. So next up here, we're going to get this cam pulley off. Inch and a half nuts all that held it on there. Out a stroke on the puller there, so let's see if that's going to be enough. Nope. Alright, so I'm just going to grab something to space this out a little bit, and then we'll go again. As soon as I put tension on it again, once I put a socket in here to space it, the gear came right out. But you can see here, all this stuff built up. It's just oil and dirt mixing from this seal leaking. So, let me get all this cleaned up a little bit, and 
and I'll show you what we have after I get some of the dirt and grease out of there. So as you can see, we got everything off here. So once the pulley came off, this woodruff key had to come out. Then there was a collar that came out with the seal, the housing, and the bushing, and I'll go show you that on the back of the truck. So this is what sticks out that the seal goes into. I've already got the old seal popped out of there. Then this collar goes in here, and that's actually where the seal rides against, is this surface. And that just bolts into the engine with three bolts. Now there is a gasket on the back. So I'm going to have to get that cleaned up. I'll make a gasket for it real quick because it does have two oil ports in it right here that I need to make sure don't get obstructed. And then I'm going to have to go clean the Woodruff key up a little bit because it took some hits to get it out of there. It was definitely stuck in there, but it's not quite a normal Woodruff key. It's stepped. So I'll go chuck this up real quick in the vise and I'll take a nice file to it and get it cleaned up so we can get it back in there. Took some memory cloth and cleaned up inside of the pulley here. So hopefully it'll go back on easier. Got that all sealed up, molted back on, so it's going to be good to go. Now I just got to get that pulley back on here and drove on. Now, I'm not going to be able to use a puller or an installer like I did before, so we'll get it on there, get it lined up with the key, and probably take a dead blow hammer and just tap it on there enough until we have a couple good threads, then we can get a, the nut back on, then we'll just use the impact to drive it in. Just come in here now with a small dead blow. Got that on there. Just that way. Paint sticking out. There it is. That's back on. So that should stop all that oil leaking down the front of the motor right there. So next up here we're going to mess with the battery compartment. To start with, these two wires right here sit on this terminal and they feed 12 volt. The rest of the bus is on a disconnect switch, but there is not a disconnect for the 12 volt. So I have a switch here. It's a 75 amp rated switch, which we're going to mount right through here so that when you go to pull your other master switches on the bus, you can shut off the 12 volts. So we'll run a wire from here up, probably fuse it, and go ahead and do that so that you can shut off all the power in the coach when you kill the batteries. That way we don't have these drawing the battery down when everything else is disconnected. The other thing is this is the wire that used to connect the two batteries. This is what we're going to replace it with. So we're going with a bigger, heavier battery cable to make it flow a little bit better. I mean, even if this is perfect, this is still resistance for the amount of power this thing draws when it starts. So we'll get the new cable in here, and then we'll start mounting the switch, running the wire up, and then making these two terminate up on that switch up there. I had the hole drilled. I'm definitely going to have a black eye though now. Uh, drill caught right at the last second. And yeah, the battery smoked me in the right eye. That hurt. Always remember to watch where you are around a drill, because if it catches, it don't care. Ow, Jesus. And we got the wire hooked in there. I didn't have an inline uh, fuse holder, so I just temped in a 10 gauge wire right there so that if I need to hook it up, I can. But I'll probably feed it with a 8 gauge or so with an inline fuse holder. And that should be good. And I'm gonna see if I can find some nicer crimp on ends for those. That's all I had with me out here. Uh, I did have the heat shrink connectors for there though, so that was nice. <laughs> 